Um, I think that's the thing. I think all 20 community councils this year either froze their council tax or uh, their precept. People don't like calling it council tax. Precept and or even lowered it. And so, yes, we have money left over from previous year because we couldn't do things and we're trying to do things now. But we, I think all councils recognised it was a time of hardship that a lot of people are out of work, weren't getting the money they used to. So even by freezing it, that helps a, a little. But it's not going up. And I think council, county council could have seriously looked at that with... Um, the reserves they certainly have, as revealed in the well, in the audit recently, of ninety-five million pounds, and they could have offset any rise or even lowered it because they shouldn't have shouldn't be holding that much in reserve anyway. But we, we're going off topic again. <laughs> Me, I always do it. So, what are the concerns you have, you and your residents have? specifically in Brackler at this point? Because I know each area has its different concerns about different things. And So you, you mentioned earlier about the um, uh, Save Our Fields campaign. Um, so I won't go into that. Uh, we've also talked about council tax quite a lot, um, yeah. uh, which is one of my hobby horses. Mm -hmm. uh, so I won't go into that either. So like some of the other things, uh, for example, um, Brackler itself, obviously, for those perhaps that don't know, is a, is a fairly kind of new housing estate. And the first sort of houses on mass in Brackler were in the 1980s. And prior to that, it would have been, a, um, you know, more, more kind of farmland more than anything. Um, but Brackler itself now is quite full. There's no room to build. But what we found is new housing estates popping up in and around Brackler. And what that's done is really put pressure on the amenities within Brackler. So not only the traffic yeah. in the area, which is which is terrible, um, but also things like, um, you know, doctor surgery and, you know, the other amenities like shops. So, you know, my, my call would be um, where big developers come in and they want to build big housing estates. And I think Park Darwin is an example. Yeah. I think the council doesn't do the best job of ensuring they keep their other commitments. So whether that's investment in schools, um, whether that's on Section 106 money to improve transport infrastructure, you know, health facilities and so on. I think I think where we build big housing estates and where houses come into an area like or, 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 you know, surrounding Brackler, you know, I think we need to not only be fair to those residents that buy those houses, but the residents that live in the areas that surround it as well. Um, and that's all kind of um, culminated in a campaign um, that Jamie Wallace, the Member of Parliament here, and I have been running for a number of years now uh, on the junction, people locally here will know the Singleton's Junction yeah. uh, between Coitchurch Road and Simonston Road, uh, uh, basically is right next to a railway bridge. Um, so it's very difficult for, um, it's very difficult to be upgraded because basically because there's a railway bridge, it makes it incredibly expensive. now. You know, if you are building new houses in places like Coiti or, uh, as has been the case, or Coy Church, you need the road infrastructure to keep up with that. By building more houses, you're going to have more traffic yeah. going down that road, obviously. So why was it never contingent on those developers when building those houses to say, right, you know, half a mile down the road here, we're going to put great pressure on this junction and we haven't got a plan to deal with it. Um, so I know Jamie's been meeting with um, officials in the Department of Transport to see if there's anything that can be done about the bridge. Um, it's something I've mentioned to other Senate members as well. So, you know, hopefully by butting heads together in Westminster, in Cardiff Bay and in, and in Angel Street and Bridge End, you know, we can come up with some kind of solution. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult thing. I know some of the Section 106 money was used down by there from park doing because it was actually supposed to be used up towards uh the little hamlet at the top opposite where brackler industrial estate yeah. where you could go into brackler or brackler industrial estate and it was used further down i think problem bcbc they don't think things through properly they built the bypass from uh literally cross and that so that cars could travel there but you've got cars tra traveling the other side which is effectively near enough a country lane that needed to be improved by the crematorium. The whole road needs to be improved, widened, and there is room to do that, but they didn't plan, I think, people coming yeah. that way. And we put a little link road past Trevor Cast's death and things like that, but, yeah, that link road still goes somewhere. There's still going to be heavy traffic. And I think 
Isabella was talking about this, there's not that joined up thinking or thinking right. through the problems. And so, so if I give you an example of that lack of joined up thinking, um, when the new houses, and I th I'm 99% confident it was that tremor cast estate in Coiti. Um, now that is technically in Coiti Ward. And yeah. so Coiti uh, Community Council um, was included as a statutory consultee and the local Coiti Council it was, and I've got no problem with that whatsoever. But the significant impact that had, because it was right on the fringe of the border with Brackler, yeah. clearly going to have a significant impact on Brackler. And yet Brackler Community Council was not a consultee, Brackler Council is not a consultee, and Brackler residents were not a consultee. So it's that lack of joined up thinking, oh, well, we've ticked the box because this housing state is in, is in Coiti, so we've satisfied the Coiti end of it without thinking, actually, right opposite side of the road is a different ward and we've got no consideration on the effect it's going to have on on that ward so no. it's as you say really it's the lack of joined up uh, approach throughout the county yeah so we've spoken a bit about you as a community councillor councillor and you're also a county councillor but you're also a member of the senate which congratulations which is very recent so it must all be new and still finding your feet but what are the differences between each role, uh, your community council, your county, and the Senate? What do you find are the differences in your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, so, so the biggest difference, in all honesty, in the day-to-day -day work is that my focus um, in the Senate, whilst you know, obviously I represent my constituents, but is on a, you know, on a Wales-wide basis. And I've got to look and think about things, not just as how they impact Bridge End, but the, the whole of Wales. Um, one of the reasons I, I stood for the Senate and I wanted to be part of the Senate is because having been the councillor for the last four and a half years, um, I could see the amount that councils kind of had to enact, uh, but didn't have very much say over. So um, if I give you an example, uh, a good example actually, uh, which you may be aware of, is BCBC's recent decision to change kind of um, the, their ability to trans uh, homeschool transport basically. Yeah two mile to a three mile catchment area. Now the three mile catchment area is a rule um, that is instituted by Cardiff Bay and they will give out funding to councils based on that three mile rule. Now that may not be appropriate in every part of the world. It, you know, it may be that walking three miles um, in, in Cardiff perhaps or, or wherever might be feasible, but it may not be in every circumstance in Bridge End. But because the Welsh Government made that decision and BCBC had to enact it, there's no flexibility within within BCBC to be able to do it. So um, you see how sort of a law made in Cardiff does have a real big impact in what happens sort of in a, in a local authority as well. And I think the other thing is as well is that people, and I think it's changed over the last year since the pandemic, but traditionally I don't think people realise how much power the Senate has. Um, and actually, you know, more power, you know, I wouldn't say this if uh, uh, my erstwhile uh, colleagues were here uh, from Parliament, but, um, uh, you know, more, more power than a lot of MPs have, actually. You know, we've, we've seen through the lockdown, you know, the, yeah. the power that the Welsh Government have and where it wanted to differ from the UK Government um, has been, you know, quite immense, really. Um, so that is, that is quite, a big, quite a big difference as well. <laughs> is more more responsibility you're yes. not just having a few thousand people what nine ten thousand people in brackley you've got now 3.1 million of whales yes. to think about <laughs> <laughs> so more sleepless nights yeah uh, so going on that part you obviously do have three roles and you wear three hats the community the county and senate do you, is there the physical time in the day to deal with everything that because it's going to be a question people ask. Did, did yeah. you think about stepping down as a councillor and keeping the community council role? Because that is basically a part-time role, but your other two roles are paid. Okay, county councillors aren't paid as much as people believe. Mm -hmm. It's only around 13,000 unless you get a chair of a committee, deputy mm -hmm. leader, mayoral, cha chair of the council, leader of the council then 13,000, it's not that much money. It's not a full-time wage by any means. No. So did you have plans? Can you do all three roles? And did you have plans to think about stepping down with a year to go? 
So, so it's a it's a good question, and it's something that I did I did consider. Um, but the way I looked at it in the end was this: right, there are a lot of Senate members currently that are also councillors, um, and from my perspective, I uh, won't be standing again next year. Um, but you know, the people of Brackle are elected me to serve five years, and I'll you know honour their um, uh, faith in me and and and, and serve that five years. I think it's also important to remember as well that like a lot of other councillors also have full-time jobs as well in, yeah. in addition to the council salary. It's just that mine is more public and, and apparent than, than a lot of other other councillors' jobs. Um, the roles, I think, as well can complement each other really well. So an example, you know, the example I gave earlier about, all right, the policy on the ground might be undertaken by BCBC, but the law behind it is done, you know, by, by the Welsh Government. So having a foot in both camps actually in that scenario is actually quite advantageous because I can, you know, if I'm getting, um, you know, it gives me an ability basically to knock heads together because I've seen in local government and and with um, the Senate as well, is there's a lot of buck passing and we've got three, even four, if you can, if you can community councils, layer of government. And quite often, I think there's a tendency too often to blame each other. Oh, the Welsh government has made us do this or Westminster is telling us to do that. And actually having having that foot in both camps gives me a bit of an ability to put heads together where, where it's needed. And the last thing I'd say as well is, is that um, you mentioned the pay. I'm not um, taking any of the council salary uh, for this year. So I don't want to be um, seen to be, you know, taking two salaries, uh, you know, absolutely doing the, the role. But um, I'm donating the council salary to good causes uh, in my region. That's, that's good. That's, it's not, nice to hear because... I know I'm not naive enough to think every person who stands for a position, whether it be Senate, councillor or community councillor, is in it for the good intentions, which the majority, I'd say 99% are, and there are people out there who are in it for the publicity, where they can get to, where it can take them to. I understand that. It's nice to see that you, you're trying to keep grounded. Yes, you could fly off now you're a senate member you could say thanks brackler goodbye but you're not you're trying to keep grounded see out the rest of your term which some people say you shouldn't do some people say yes it's admiral because you're trying to keep your promise to the electorate that you gave five years nearly five years ago now when mm. they elected you i'm going to be your councillor thank you for electing me i'm going to stay here till the end but it's, it's good and i'm glad you keep it that way